Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be looking at the top 5 England managers of all time. Yes, the England managerial position is a poison chalice. Choosing the top 5 was pretty difficult. Not because there were so many good managers to pick from, it was the fact that there wasn't hardly any good managers really. So picking the top 5 was difficult, but I had a go. At number 5, I've got Sven Jöran Eriksson. He was the first foreign manager of the England team. He was the Swedish national. Sven Jöran Eriksson managed England from 2001 to 2006. Now Sven had just come from winning the Italian league with Lazio, so there were lots of expectations coming into the job. And he got off to a great start, including an iconic 5-1 win against Germany in Munich. However, he will be known as the man that underachieved, which is a theme for a lot of these England managers, but he underachieved with what is known as the golden generation of English players that included Beckham, Lampard, Gerrard, Rooney. In his three major tournaments he played, he reached the quarterfinal all three times and got knocked out. First, it was losing to Brazil in the 2002 World Cup, then in the Euro 2004 in penalties to Portugal, then in 2006 to Portugal once again in penalties. Sven never had any disastrous results like some other England managers, but he was always just under par and he should have done better. Regardless, he comes in at number five in my list. Coming in at number four, I've got Terry Venables, or El Tel as they used to call him. Now he's come from managing Barcelona and Tottenham Hotspurs where he won the FA Cup with them in 1991. So there was much respect for Venables as a manager. And he came into the England squad to fix them up after they had failed to qualify for the 1994 World Cup under manager Graham Taylor. And Venables brought some excitement to the England squad. He tried new formations and he played attacking football that he had learned from while managing Barcelona. And at the focal point of his tactic, it was Mr. Alan Shearer in attack. And they done really well. He led England in the Euro 96, where England's feel-good factor came after beating the Netherlands 4-1, a demolition of Netherlands team that included Bergkamp and Kluivert. The hopes of a nation was an all-time high and the song Football's Coming Home is coming home, football's coming home became famous. The tournament was in England so there was much expectations, especially when they reached the semi-final. But they would lose to Germany in the semi-final on penalties and that was the end of Venable's tenure at England. It was only lasted for two years but those two years were pretty cool and Euro 96 is a standout for England's history for the exciting football how much the fans bought into the players. It's disappointing, but nonetheless, Venables comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, it is Sir Bobby Robson. Now, he managed England from 1982 to 1990, one of the most respected managers in English football history. But he got off to a shaky start after failing to qualify for the 1984 Euros tournament. He actually handed in his resignation, but the FA rejected it as they felt he was still the right man to lead England. And in the 1986 World Cup, England were playing well, but they were knocked out in the quarterfinals to Argentina and certain Maradona who cheated to score with his hand and knocked England out. Again, England hard done by. In the 1990 World Cup, Robson took England again, but this time to the semi-finals and agonizingly losing to Germany on penalties. He decided to step down after the tournament, but those eight years were pretty memorable for England managerial standards and 990 World Cup was a standout performance by the team. So for that reason, he comes in at number three on the list. Coming in at number two, I've got Gareth Southgate, the current England manager, and he's been at the job since 2016. Now Gareth gets a lot of flack for being overrated apparently or he's not good enough for the England job. He doesn't have the tactical nous of all the other European managers. But to me those people are haters. They are ungrateful fans who forget where England was before Gareth Southgate took on the job. Now Southgate was the under 21 England coach and he took over England on an interim basis after Sam Allardyce was fired. Gareth came in the job without much managerial experience. So many thought he wasn't going to last that long, it was only for an interim basis. However, after a few good results, Gareth Southgate was given the main job. But what Southgate did with the England squad was a remarkable job because he completely transformed the mindset of these England players of 
playing for England and caring about playing for England. See, before, players cared more about their club performances than playing for the national team. And Gareth completely changed the attitude in the dressing room for all the English players. And he doesn't get enough credit for that. He's also done an amazing job in getting the best out of performances from the English players who were notoriously known for underachieving for the national squad. But under Southgate, the English players actually perform and they play with heart. Yes, Gareth Southgate benefited from having a high talented squad, but nearly all England managers have always had a high talented squad. Again, Gareth isn't known for his tactical brilliance, but the players play for him. They play with heart, they play with determination, they defend well together, they play with passion, making tackles, going for the last ditch, goals. And sometimes in international football, that's more important than the tactics because you don't get enough time with the players to practice tactics. So you can only ask the players to play with heart. And that's what Gareth brought into this squad. But you know, all this isn't just talk from Gareth. He's backed it up. If you look at his record, World Cup 2018, he reached the semi-final of the World Cup the first time since 1990. And it was such a great moment for the nation. We had high hopes. It was disappointing to lose to Croatia at extra time. Coulda, shoulda done better. But oh well, okay, next tournament, Euro 2020, where England reached the final. The first final England has reached in a major tournament in over 50 years. Yes, England lost again cruelly to Italy in the penalties, but he still reached us the final and it was an amazing time for the country to watch their team in the final. So a semi-final and a final in major tournaments under his belt, there's no doubt Gareth is the second greatest manager of all time for England. Finally, at number one, there can only be one number one. The one and only, the man who led England to their only World Cup victory in 1966 is Mr. Sir Alf Ramsey. Now, under him, England were amazing. They demolished nearly every team in the 1966 World Cup. And in the final of the World Cup, they played their arch nemesis Germany, where they demolished them 4-2 to lift the World Cup in London, in Wembley. It was an amazing moment and it was because of Alf Ramsey and how he got the squad playing under him. Alf Ramsey's England were known as the wingless wonders because he never used wingers. He never used wingers because he didn't think they could defend. Instead, he used attacking midfielders that would come back in defence. And he also had star players like Sir Bobby Moore, Bobby Charlton, Jeff Hurst, Gordon Banks, and they were all flourished under the general and the tactics of Sir Alf Ramsey. Now, it wasn't all great after 1966 World Cup. In the 1970 World Cup, they were up 2-0 in the quarterfinal, and, but Germany came back to win 3-2. During the Euro 1972 tournament, they lost once again to Germany, and he was sacked after failing to qualify for the 1974 World Cup. But nonetheless, there's only been one man to manage England to World Cup glory, and for that reason alone, he is the greatest England manager they've ever had. Thank you for tuning into the list. Let me know what you think of the comments.